So in this revision we'll take a look at the paper for starters and this is a random paper similar to one the one that you're going to be given for part A. Basically the first bit stresses out that part B materials must not be accessed while you're doing the part A materials. Make sure that you read all this in advance uh, so you can pause the video and read and this is the bit where it asks you to create a folder with this convention here. So if we just copy this, you will be asked to save all these files in a location. I'm using my desktop. If you're not given a location, you can start with your desktop as well. I say new folder and I paste. It says center number and square brackets. I'll take them away. So I'll pretend that it's one, two, three, four, five, six, the center number. I'm just pretending, remember. Then the next is the registration number, your registration number, uh, 89765, just completely random. So make sure that you know your registration number. Underscore surname. So I'll say, let's pretend that this is Clark and the first initial let's pretend that the name is William so let's go for W and we delete all of this and it says part A so you can see now the name of the folder where you can store you will be storing all activities activity 1 in that using that naming convention again take away the square brackets your registration number surname and the first letter of the surname preceded by the word activity 1 for instance activity 2 etc so take a read at this as well now we move on and it gives you another few instructions here and repeats the naming conventions again that you will be submitting and the folder again as you can see here if we carry on and you can pause the video and have a look at the paper. You are advised to spend 10 minutes reading the task scenario and the activities you are about to complete. You may make notes, etc. There is a scenario here, and this is the Sherbrooke Estate and Safari Park database, and we will be dealing with this for starters. Here, it tells you as well the database will record information about events, customer event, event sales. It basically gives you the tables so if we go further down it's got a few more things to consider here if we go further down there's a database that you can use and use the normalization that we have shown in the class you will start the tasks after you see the database so this is activity one so for activity one we have to normalize basically all of this is about normalizing the database as you can see here it says screen print your database relationships. This may as well be asked in a different way. They might ask you to take a screenshot of your ERD. ERD. It might be where it says activity one, the final result of activity one, screen print your database relationships may be instead screen print, screen print your ERD. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's the entity relationships diagram. Entities are the tables. Relationships are the links between the tables. And the diagram is the whole thing, the whole uh, diagram that you're taking a screenshot of. So remember these initials as well in case you see them here. Don't get confused. So let's move on and try to normalize this uh, database here. So I have added this in a different file. The scenario is written down here. When you read this, it's actually giving you the tables more or less, yeah? So the first thing that we're going to do is move the IDs to another area. So let's move the scenario a little bit down into another page. And here we have event ID. We move away the IDs first. We leave the copy behind so we don't draw a circle around this because we don't move it from the table for the time being, yeah? we move a copy of the event ID to another table but it leaves a copy of it behind so we don't draw a circle that signifies that this has to be removed from the table now we start drawing circles around the fields that we are going to actually move 
and it's the event ID as you can see here has a description so that's something that is moved we move that field depending on the event as well and the event ticket price so these will be moved to the event table so event date and event ticket price now obviously from the labels up here you're able to do this quite easy so here you have the event description uh, let's put the names properly we take away the spaces and we put a capital to have naming conventions event date is properly done and event ticket price is properly done event id as well so this will be the event table table tbl event let's move on to the customer so the customer id moves to another table called let's draw a line here and so it will be the customer table so tbl customer no spaces we leave a copy behind therefore we do not frame this we do not frame this remember so we don't remove the customer id but now we have to find everything that depends on the customer for instance let's say the surname we have to look at them one by one yeah it doesn't say customer surname but it says surname it belongs to the customer yeah that goes first of all we write the customer id yeah followed by the surname as the customer has a house number the same customer so that will go and a postcode you can go to the original lesson in order to find out the details about this and how normalization is done and the dependencies but it's quite clear what is happening here so you can see that basically the IDs are something separate the dependents, the children of the customer ID are surname, house number and postcode obviously what is left behind are the foreign keys which are copies of the IDs that were left behind so we can label these as foreign keys now so this is the foreign key here uh, the other foreign key is that one uh, seat sale ID along with the foreign keys and the remaining fields for instance seat type depends on the seat sale ID and the number of tickets sold in each sale as well depends on the sale ID so we actually have a table here that doesn't have a composite key but rather has an ID and you can call it the sale table so if we draw another line down here we have the sale ID and here we have the event ID the customer ID the two foreign keys so as you can see here I write them without spaces and what is remaining is the seat type and the number of tickets number of tickets now that the table is basically normalized let's just name the table here as well so this will be the TBL sale and here we have the tables and we're ready now to actually start creating our tables.